It's Positively Muskegon, Andy O'Reilly today, and I am at a very special place in Muskegon. I was invited by Judy Pratt to come and meet the people at the lemonade stand, and we are upstairs in one of your quiet spots sure. in the lemonade stand. 18 years this has been going on, Judy. Yep, 18 and a half. Tell me about the lemonade stand first and foremost. What's it all about? The lemonade stand offers a place where people can come and get their lives back together. Um, we were talking to the people a little while ago about why they come here and why they need it. Um, they mentioned family quite yeah. a bit. We're people who should have never met under ordinary circumstances. Right. Yeah, I was, I was actually invited to be a part of your, your weekly meeting. Yeah. That was, you that could went be on. a part of the whole group. I probably like. should. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the life I've led and everybody out there knows that it's always... And, and we all go through parts of life where there's ups and there's downs and there are highs and there are lows. And you, you crash. Yeah. Some people crash, some people hit harder, some people find it that, that, that they're at the point where they just don't know where to turn. We've had a number of people come to us when this was the last stop, and if this didn't work, they plan to check out. Really? We have, and we didn't lose any of them. You haven't they lost any of them yet. Yeah. One, one gentleman said that when he came in, somebody offered to fix him some food, and it he just felt he had friends, yeah. family, immediately. Uh, how do people find out about this? Because I didn't know. I, I, I mean, I met you through an event downtown mm -hmm. not too long ago, and, and you, you were kind of up there talking <laughs> at the last second, and you kind of felt like you were out of place a little bit. And I'm like, oh, you did fine by me. I want to come do a story on you now. <laughs> um, how, how do people find out about this service? Mostly it's word on the street. We're quite centrally located for a number of the people that use the place or that yeah. need the place. So that's basically it, although we do try to get the word out in whatever way we can. Sure. But this is good. This is good, <laughs> this yeah. Well, that's what we're here for. We yeah. spread the news about people that do remarkable things and, and, and take care of each other because yeah. it really is. I mean, and, I'm, and you know, the viewers here are, are familiar that I've got a big group, you know, background, you know, through Alcoholics Anonymous and mm -hmm. things like that. I really believe that there's power in, in groups and there's power in people to heal each other and themselves yeah. in the way that this goes on. That, I did a little research before I came down. The lemonade stand happens in other cities as well. So it's not completely unique to Muskegon, but for 18 years you've been kind of championing this thing here and keeping it alive. But when we started out, as far as we knew, there was there was certainly nothing like this in, Mis in Michigan. Right. And as far as we knew, there was nothing like this anywhere. So you kind of innovated it. Yeah. 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 I That's was, a good thing to be. Yeah. Yeah. I um, years ago, my youngest daughter was going to go off to college, yeah. and I needed something. I'd been a stay-at-home mom. I yeah. needed something to do. I responded to a tiny ad in the newspaper that a day treatment place in Muskegon, um, through mental health, needed volunteers. Sure. And I responded to that. I was with them for a number of years. We opened up a drop-in center in Muskegon on limited potentials. I volunteered there for nine years and never saw myself quitting there. <laughs> but they brought in a new director and that didn't work out yeah, well. well. Sometimes Not well it doesn't. At all, yeah. you know? So I knew I had to quit. My daughter said, then it's time for you to open a place of your own. And I said, well, how do I do that? You yeah. know? But I went to bed that night and sort of had the whole idea there. And so I got together with 20 people from the drop-in center and said, this is what I'm thinking. Do you want to try? Yeah. And they all did. And they did. And 18 and a half years later, <laughs> and nine months from the day that we first met until the, we had the place open, it took nine months. Has it always been right here? Mm -hmm. Has it really? Yeah. And you've got some renovation going on. I noticed you got some new carpet painting downstairs, stuff, yeah. painting, updating, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. What do we have today in our in our meeting? In that 10, 11 people, maybe? I think there were a few more than that, was there? but something like that. We have 29 members. 29 right members. We are limited to 40 by, um, you know, by the laws of the sure, city. Sure, sure. By the fire laws. And they, and they come in, and it's open from 5 in the morning till... 5 in the afternoon. 5 in the afternoon, and it's a place for them to come. And some of the things we heard talked about were structure. Yeah. Some of the things we heard talked about were a place to belong. Yeah. Some of the things we heard talked about were, like you mentioned, family. They come here where they, they're they not going to be judged. No. They're not going to be talked about behind their backs. They're going to find a place where they fit in. And now, are, are 
and I use the term, I want to use the term cautiously, but do they, are they suffering from some kind of... Oh, okay, we were set up for people who deal with mental health concerns. Mental health concerns, yeah, yeah. that's the word, okay. That's what you were trying to find. Yeah. We were, that's, that's what we were designed for, for people with mental illnesses. Sure. And we have the whole gamut. We've got schizophrenics, we have people who deal with bipolar, we've had chronic depression, we have Asperger's, that's what I want to sure. say, I think. Um, we just have everything, you yeah. know, or if they're not here now, we've had them on the way through, but, um, but it was never set up to be exclusive. Right. We were set up for whoever needs us. Whoever needs to be mm -hmm. here. So yeah. you so don't it, necessarily have to be diagnosed with one of those no. things. You don't have to deal with CMH or right. Healthwest at all. Right, right. But, you uh, can come here and you can find yeah, a place to belong. If you need it. Yeah. It's a really remarkable place. And But our people heal here. Yeah. Grow and heal. And, and, they, and they do that by taking responsibility for the place. Yep. Yeah. And for helping each other. Yeah. I mean, the support they get is good. Yeah. But it's what they give that helps them the most. And that's what I love about it. Yeah. You know, that's what so we talked about with AA and stuff like that, too. Yeah, that's what helps the most. The lunch that you provided down there, wow. <laughs> I mean, it was it was a full, uh, <laughs> it was ham, it was potatoes, you got a dessert coming up. Yep. Is this daily? There's lunch every day, yeah. but the Wednesday lunch tends to be, well. The big one. They can count on a nice lunch on yeah. Wednesday. Otherwise, it might be sandwiches, it might be hot dogs, it might be chicken, it might be whatever anybody feels like putting together. Sure. There's food here, and yeah. they can cook whatever they like. That's that was cool. where we started out. We started out with food as our foundation. Sure. Because we knew that the hungry person can't do anything no, except to worry about what they're going to eat the next time nice, they get yeah. hungry. So we started out, and right shortly after we opened, we started dealing with... Um, Feeding America and Grand sure. Rapids, and that's helped us so, so much. So they get some stuff in here to help you out. Oh, they do. Kind of they they bring food to the depot twice a month. Yeah. Um, the depot down down. Sure. And, and we can pick food up there whenever we like. That's amazing. The church across the street, the First Congregational Church, helps us out um, with a check four times a year, and that pays our bill with with. Uh, they used to be cleaners. Now they're feeding America. Yep, yep. You have to stop and think. <laughs> but it helps, takes care of that bill and helps out with other stuff and anything else we need. And in the meeting downstairs too, you talked about you're taking a taking a day trip. You're heading up to Silver Lake. Adventures have Fun. always been a special part of what we yeah. do. We love adventures. <laughs> yeah. We always used to do Michigan Adventure every year, but that got pretty pricey. Yeah, well, you know. We're on a limited budget. Sure. I mean, they had to to keep up, I suppose. Sure. But... Um, and then our population here, our core population, is getting older. Sure. And so some of us who were having a lot of fun 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Can't really ride the roller coaster anymore. No. I know the feeling. I used to go on them all the time, but now they just make me dizzy. <laughs> I got old. I don't know how that happened. You mentioned some of the stuff that goes on, the food, the adventures. The f where does the funding come from? How does, how does all this work? We are under contract with, we have a contract with um, Healthwest. Okay. And originally, when we started out with them, it paid our rent and not much more than that, a little bit of utilities. But we supplemented it. We did better then, actually, because we supplemented it with the, um, the, the Vegas nights. And we could do four of those a year, and that helped a whole lot. Sure. But again, the aging situation, the Vegas nights has you up three, three nights in a row, and you get home like four o'clock in the morning. Oh, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we don't do that and anymore. And even even to the Vegas nights have become harder to do too. Yeah. The state the state has kind of made that a little bit more difficult much thing to more do. So yeah, much really. More. Yeah. I know we're facing that in Roosevelt Park right now. Yeah. You know, we used to love to have the big Vegas night in Roosevelt Park. We did Park, run out there. Right? And then you just can't do it as easy as you used to anymore. No. So do you take donations from people that, that donations want to help? are very welcome. Yeah. Um, people donate through the United Way. Okay. But. You know, we've, we're 501c3, sure. and so any donations are tax deductible. Absolutely. So we certainly appreciate that. Right now, when we couldn't do that anymore, we talked with Healthwest. They doubled what we were getting. So this way it pays our most of our utilities, and, and we get by pretty much okay. We, yeah. We've been managing, although 
the checkbook balance steadily comes down. Don't you know that it feeling? That. And we just got a lift out there. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and we weren't sure. We didn't know how we were going to pay for it. At first, I was quoted $30,000 to get a lift like that, which was, we couldn't do it. There, yeah. was, there was no way that that could happen. This one we got for a much better price. Um, really appreciate Barry Mall <laughs> who put it in for sure. us. Um, and all access lift, get its name in there. But but the, but it, he it was always willing to work finds a way to work out. Yeah, he was somehow it always works out. Well, we took two thousand out of our checkbook. My husband paid the rest. Did he? He's like I said in in the Facebook page. He's the world's best landlord. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it helps his husband, too. Yeah, that, too. Because it if it's like at our house and you go home like this. <laughs> yeah, that helps. <laughs> <laughs> I get that once in a great while. You guys have a Facebook page? Yes, we do. Don't have a website yet? No, Facebook's we don't. Facebook's really pretty good to stay in touch, mm -hmm. so people can find it. We'll link it here. Okay, we'll but We'll put it, a link up. Okay. All right, that'd yeah. be good. And it's um, Lemonade Stand in Muskegon. Yep, we'll find that. Yeah. And if, if people are interested in knowing more, is there a phone number they can call? Is there sure. a... Um, well, they can call me at home okay. if they like. If they'd like to do that, okay. Uh, the number would be two three one seven seven three six one one eight. Six one one eight. Okay. Uh -huh. Very good. And um, I, they could send an email as well, and that would be Lady Lemonade zero three at yahoo dot com. Very good. Yeah. You. As we had our meeting downstairs before we came up here to tape. We have a meeting every Wednesday. Yeah, one yeah, every, every Wednesday, very important. Um, you kind of impress me as the de facto mom to a lot of these people. Oh, yeah. Is that how it feels to you? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> and do you mind? No. Not, not a bit? No, <laughs> not at all. What do you take away from this at the end of the day? When it's all wrapped up and said and done, I mean, yeah. it's probably not the highest paying job in the world. <laughs> It's probably, you know, it's no. probably not the most glorious job in the world. I suppose that'd be a good place to put in the fact that nobody gets paid anything here. Yeah. Nobody. Yeah. The members do the work that needs to be done, and nobody makes gets paid at all. Yeah. They never have. Um, and what do I take away? The fact that I've been able to help. It, it's good, you know. Um, I will we'll, we'll probably see Amber doing much better. Yeah. Amber was having an especially hard time today. Yeah, I remember. Very hard. And um, we're going to see her feel better. We're going to... A lot of good things will happen yeah. because of this. I mentioned Michelle having grown so much and yeah. come so far. And that feels good. I take a lot of pride that I've been able to help her. She did the main work. Yeah. But I was able to help. 18 years um, of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's been so many people through here, and, and a lot of things have happened that aren't that positive, but there's been an awful lot of good stuff that's happened. Yeah. Awful lot. Well. I mentioned uh, downstairs a gentleman who lived on an open front porch yeah. for four years. He spent the winters out there, yeah. too. And it was just open. It wasn't even enclosed. It was an abandoned house. And as soon as he came in, I, I, that can't happen. And I had a lady at the time who, who was able to take him into her, her home. And, um, and then by the time the winter was over, he, was, he had contact with his family again because when he was homeless, they wouldn't have anything to do with him. Yeah. And he got an apartment right after that. He was able to get back in with a band. He really was able to accomplish a lot. And that's why I do it. His son almost died out east. Yeah. We worked to get him out there to, he thought he was going out there to unplug the plug. But he didn't, Chris made out okay, Chris survived that. But you know, we go through the good times, we go through the bad times. We do it together. Yeah, we do. And that's how you can bear the Lump in the throat right there. Thanks. <laughs> now I gotta go face the rest of the day. All choked up. <laughs> There's miracles in Muskegon every day, and you're looking at one right here. Judy, thank you for your time today. Thank you for what you do for people. Thank you for what you're doing. Well, hey, you know, that's what it's we're cool. here for. We're telling the, the better stories in Muskegon. <laughs> yeah. And there's one of the best right there. The well, lemonade stand is downtown Muskegon on Jefferson Street. You'll find all the links right here on Positively Muskegon. I wish you the best. And if you ever need to tell your story again, 
you call me and we'll get it done. Very good. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All the links are right here on Positively Muskegon. <laughs>